महाराज भगवान ब्रजेश तनयस तद्धाम वृंदावनम रम्या काचिदुपासना व्रजवधु वर्गे न तया कल्पिता श्रीमत् भागवत पुराण यमलम प्रेम पुमार तो महान श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभो मतैदम नायत्रया रहा श्री चैतन्य नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत सीता जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा So today, Hare Krishna, Sunday the 23rd, 2022, we will be, by the mercy of Guru Gauranga, studying this wonderful conversation between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rai Ramanan, which is typically the entire chapter that we find in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the Madhya Leela, chapter 8. And... This particular conversation is, I would say, is the summum bonum of pure bhakti or the highest level of devotional service. If by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas, if we can even grasp some of the fundamental points of this conversation, certainly it will help us in regards to our perspective of what highest devotion is. So I will be going verse by verse of this very important conversation. But prior to that, I would like to set the stage in terms of this particular very, very important conversation that has been very nicely described by Sri Krishna Raj Kaviraj Goswami in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> So before we actually enter into the mood, I would like to glorify both of them, Mahaprabhu and Rai Ramananda with a beautiful verse that says as follows. Sanchari Rama Bhidabhak तमेघे स्वभक्ति सिद्धांत 
चयामृता गौराब्धिरेत अमुना वितीर्ण तज्ञात्वरत्नालयता प्रयाति मीनिंग श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु इज अ बाउंडलेस इज अनलिमिटेड इज द नेक्टेरियन ओशन रमा अब्दि वेर ही हैज एस्टैब्लिश द कंक्लूजन्स ऑफ द हाईएस्ट डिवोशन नोन एज द भक्ति सिद्धांत कंक्लूजन मींस सिद्धांत so the highest conclusions and his devotee shri ramanand rai who has been described in this verse as gauravir etair amuna vitarnais bhakta meghe bhakta meghe as the devotee cloud who is laden with the pure devotional love the siddhanta as taught by chaitanya mahaprabhu as in the heart of mahaprabhu his devotee ramanand rai is that huge cloud who mahaprabhu has filled with this bhakti siddhanta the conclusions of pure devotion and when mahaprabhu experienced that rain of bhakti tatvas because in this conversation mahaprabhu is asking questions and rai ramanand is raining he is pouring those conclusions and when chaitanya mahaprabhu experienced that shower of rain of the bhakti siddhantas or the bhakti tatvas or the conclusions of bhakti that the cloud known as ramananda showered upon him he was transformed into an ocean of jewels how beautiful this verse depicts both the most munificent personality chaitanya mahaprabhu and his nectar laden cloud shri ramanand rai i offer my obeisances to his divine grace ac bhakti vidanta swami shri prabhupad to all the gaudiya vaishnava acharyas in our line so that whatever i speak whatever i understand i am able to convey to the audience this is a very high level of subject matter which is generally meant for a very advanced audience so whoever has actually joined i would consider including myself very fortunate to speak on this subject matter so that for our purification and our dimension of bhakti would go to we would set higher standards in this particular samvad or this con- samvad in sanskrit means conversation and Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur and many of our acharyas have given a very wonderful commentary on this conversation itself. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after taking sannyas, he went to Puri, Jagannath Puri, on the request of his mother. because she would get the news of her son time and again from the devotees that would be visiting the 
Jagannath Puri Dham, which would be much closer than Sri Vrindavan Dham. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agreed and he stay put mostly in Jagannath Puri. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met many, many wonderful devotees, his associates, Advaita Acharya, Gadadhar Pandit, Srivas Acharya. They all used to visit from West Bengal. They used to come to Jagannath Puri time and again. And in Jagannath Puri itself, there was uh, the great Bhavanandrai and his sons, one of them was Rai Ramananda. And one of the most leading priests or acharyas at that time in Jagannath Puri was Sri Sarvabhava Bhattacharya who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed a lot of mercy. And he was actually in the beginning it is said that he was a Brahmavadi. Brahmavadi means one who does not believe in the Pers does not believe in personalism. He doesn't believe in personalism, that person, that kind of philosophy where God is some energy and he himself is God. So these Brahmavadi, but because of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became a pure Vaishnava. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to go to for a padyatra, a tour of the entire Indian continent. At that time, Sarvabhavatacharya told him that please meet Rai Ramananda, who is in the south part of India, he is one of the ministers. And please, I request you, he's a very good devotee. So, like that, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set off for the Padyatra, and he came to the southern part of India, at that time, He actually, not too far from where Rai Ramanand was, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to a place known as Jiyad Narsinga, not too far from the banks of the Godavari. It is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charita Amrita and Thakur Bhakti Vinod in the Amrit Pravaha Bhashya that after visiting the temple of Jiyad Narsinga, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the banks of the river Godavari and that place was known as Vidyanagar. A place, a city where there were learned scholars, Vidyanagar. And when Srila Ramanand Rai went there to take his bath, this is just a summary of the entire chapter, and then we will go into the details. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met, and after introducing himself, Rai Ramanan requested Mahaprabhu to remain in Vidyanagar so that he could take advantage of his association. Honoring his devotee's request, Mahaprabhu stayed in the house of a Vaishnava Brahman a Vedic Brahman, and in the evening, Rai Raman used to come alone without because he was a big minister and he had many soldiers and other aides 
that always accompanied him. But in the evening, he used to come alone. And Raya Ramanan came to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he came in a very ordinary clothing. He didn't come in a minister's clothing. This is a very nice example that is set that no matter how affluent maybe we may have positions in the society either as aristocrat, aristocrats or business magnates or maybe somebody who is in a ministerial role or even the king or the prime minister or the president, when one approaches the Lord or Lord's pure devotee, then one should be very humble and not show off their opulence. So Rai Ramanan, he came in an ordinary dress and he offered his respectful obeisances to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And here it is amazing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu starts asking questions. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Rai Ramananda, what is the object and process of worship? And he has to substantiate with the verses from the scriptures. Supposing if he makes a particular proposition that this is the object of life or this is the of mankind and the process of worship is such and such, then it should not be something that is whimsical. So that is another very important philosophical point that we all need to take home following in the footsteps of his divine Krishna Prabhupada, everything should be as it is. Hmm. Because our thinking, feeling, willing, in, when we are here in this material world, we are subject to the onslaught of maya, of illusion. And we have these four defects. We are subject to illusion. We are subject to inebriates. We are subject to inclination to cheat. And we are also subject to, uh, there's a fourth one. I call it the four eyes. Like I as in I. <laughs> Illusion, inclination to cheat, uh, inebriates, meaning making mistakes. And there's a fourth one. I cannot recollect that at this point. So in other words, what we are trying to say is that we are subject to these these uh, frailties. Or we are subject to these weaknesses. And if we are subject to these weaknesses, then we are not able to comment or understand the spiritual subject matters, which come from a higher domain. And that higher domain is not subject to the personalities who reside there or who come from there. They are not subject to illusion, mistakes, etc inclination to cheat. We all have that. Even a little child, you know, when, when something breaks and if the child has broken something in the house, she'll say, no, 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 no. I did not do that, mother. You know, and also the little children, when they're playing, sometimes they try to, even if they've lost the game, they try to take the prize or whatever. So they have an inclination to cheat. Even right from the time when they start speaking and walking, because that is the, the influence of the three modes of material nature. The mode of ignorance, tamogun, the mode of passion, rajagun, and the mode of goodness, which is satogun. So we have to hear 
subject matters especially about spirituality for those who are not subject to these conditions from non conditioned souls and it is so important that the supreme personality of god had in his most munificent incarnation as chaitanya mahaprabhu set the rules that yes ramanand rai please tell me what is the goal of life and the process of worship but it has to be in accordance as it is as per the vedic literatures so like that ramanand rai starts with many many different subject matters which we will be dealing with in detail as we go through the verses and chaitanya mahaprabhu is not so satisfied with with the answers that he gives although they are correct answers but the level of understanding and the level of realization and what mahaprabhu wanted to hear was not attained yet so eventually ramanand rai has started glorifying the residents of vraj including the topmost residents of the vraj the milkmaids of vraj the gopis and then further he describes the glories of shrimati radharani when chaitanya mahaprabhu he actually due to the thundering of that cloud rai ramananda when it burst chaitanya mahaprabhu uh showered in that rain and became an ocean of jewels so i start with text number 1 of shri chaitanya charitamrita sancharya ramadbida भक्त मेघे स्वभक्ति सिद्धांत चयामृता गौरवधीर एत अमुना वितरने तज ज्ञावा रत्नालयता प्रयति and i already explained this verse i started that but i'm going in chronological order sri chaitanya mahaprabhu is known as gauranga is the ocean of conclusive knowledge and devotional service he empowers sri ramanand rai who may be likened to a cloud of devotional service this cloud was filled with the water of all conclusive purposes of devotional service and was empowered by the ocean to spread this water over the sea of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu himself thus the ocean of chaitanya mahaprabhu became filled with the jewels of the knowledge of pure devotional service so mahaprabhu is known as gauranga gaur means golden and ranga means complexion so that personality whose complexion is golden and why is his complexion golden because he is sri krishna he is nandanandan krishna yashodanandan krishna and what is his color he is blackish and the shrimad bhagavatam it is said krishna varnam twisha a krishnam sango pango parshadam san kirtanai prayer yagyai yajanti hi su medashah meaning krishna is blackish the word krishna means black also there is more than one meaning of the word krishna krishna also means dark or black so krishna varnam krishna is darkish in color but he appeared as krishna twisha twisha means the complexion or the color of his skin was a krishnam he was golden in color and the reason is because chaitanya mahaprabhu when he came we all know there was external reasons and internal reasons and the external reasons was to uh 
basically preach the glories of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And to give, inundate the whole world through the process of chanting the holy names, of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, eventually take them to the point that will give them love of God and God's associates. Love of Krishna, Radharani, and the associates, the most intimate associates of the Supreme Lord. And the lover of Krishna, Radhaji. The service, that was the external reason. But what was the internal reason? Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vanyaiva Swadhyo Yena Adbhuta Madurima Kidrisho Va Madhyaha Sokyam Cha Asya Mad Anubhavata Kidrisham Vetti Lobhat Tad Bhavadhyaha Samajani Sachi Garba Sindhu Hari Induhu To glorify Radhaya Pranaya Mahima, to glorify the love of Sri Radha. Kidrisha Vanyeva Swadhyo Yena Adbhuta, to taste his own sweetness. Madhurima, to taste the sweetness as Sri Radha felt when she was in association with Sri Krishna. Madhya Sokyam Cha Asya, to get that kind of bliss. That Radharani obtained, Madha Anubhavata Kidrisham, he developed that Lobaha, Vetti Lobahat. Krishna developed that greed of attaining the mood of Radharani. Tad Bhavadya Samajani Sachi Garba Sindhu Hari Indu, and therefore he appeared in the womb as the full moon, as it arises in the western horizon. Similarly, he appeared as the full moon in the womb of his mother, Sachi. So this is the internal reasons. And when he decided to come down, rather than he said, I don't think it's a good idea for you to go just like that because the when you do obtain my mood, your situation will drastically change. You will be rolling on the floor, on the ground, in the dust. Day and night, you will be crying. Nayana gala dashru dharaya vadanam gadgada rudaya gira pulakir nichitam vapu your hairs will be standing on an end. Your voice will be faltering. And torrents of rain, like tears, you will be inundated with them. You will become crazy. Because once you obtain my mood, and especially in the mood of separation, then you will go crazy. And you will do crazy things. So I must protect you. Because Radharani loves Krishna so much. She became a shield. And because Radharani is golden in color, her complexion is tapta kanchana gaurangi. Tapta means molten. Kanchan means gold. And therefore she is known as gaurangi. Radharani, one of the names of Radharani is gaurangi. Because her complexion is like that of molten gold. She said, I will wrap myself around you, O Krishna. So that when you roll the rocks and the pebbles, and when you rub your cheeks on the walls, and blood will ooze out, when you, you, you will be protected because I will personally wrap myself around you. And that is the reason the dark complexion Krishna, he became Gauranga. 
And he is indeed the conclusive. Krishna Kaviraj Goswami says he is the conclusive of devotional knowledge. Because devotional knowledge, the conclusion is what? What is the highest conclusion of devotional knowledge? The highest conclusion of devotional knowledge is pleasing Sri Krishna. And when we say Krishna, it automatically encompasses all his intimate associates and the topmost intimate associate, Sri Radha. Anya Bilashita Shunya Gyan Karma Adi Anavrutam Anukulyana Krishna Anushilanam Tad Bhakti Ruttam Narad Bhakti Sutra. And then Rup Goswami has quoted the same, the same verse in Bhakti Rasam Sindhu. We have many, many different ideas about Bhakti. Some say study. Some say karma. Do your duty. Most people, that's what their idea is. They quote the Bhagavad Gita, the third chapter, some verses from the Karma Yoga. Work is worship. And even in today's modern world, we find that there are so many dedicated to work. And that is considered the highest duty to do your job honestly, your karma. That's one concept that's floating around since time immemorial. For some, bhakti or devotional service is studying the scriptures. Only studying the scriptures and not understanding the highest or the deepest rooted knowledge that is there, then that is on the platform of knowledge or gyan that is will not lead to pure devotional service what will lead to pure devotional service is what we will be hearing in the next few sessions from the lotus mouth of rai ramananda so naraji has said that it, this pure devotional service is beyond karma beyond gyana Adi and other things that do not lead to the conclusion of pleasing the Supreme Personality of God and Sri Krishna. Anukulena Krishna Anushilanam Tad Bhakti Ruttam. That is Uttam Bhakti. There are different levels, but what is Uttam? Uttam means the topmost, the zenith. The best. Sometimes the Supreme Lord is so kind that in the case when he spoke the Bhagavad Gita, his friend and disciple Arjun asked the questions and he dissipated the darkness in Arjun's understanding. Nashtamo smriti labda tvat prasada maya chuta maya chuta gata sandeha stito asmi karishye vachanam tabaha Arjun asked many, many questions. Please, my dear Krishna, in the beginning, he says, Shishyaste ham shadi maam prapannam. I have surrendered to you and I am your disciple now. Please dissipate my darkness. So, there is guru and there is sishya. There is spiritual master and then there is disciple. The word guru in Sanskrit means one who can dissipate darkness. Our life is full of darkness. The highest darkness being we are ignorant. 
And what is that? Ignorance. We are thinking that we are these bodies. Based on the bodily concept, we have been living our existence since time immemorial. Because somebody is born in United States, they call themselves Americans. Somebody born in India, they call themselves Indian. Somebody born in Gujarat, they will call themselves Gujarati. Somebody born you know, in Maharashtra, they'll call themselves Maharashtrian. And so on and so forth. But the conclusion of spiritual science is that we are not these bodies, we are spiritual souls. And the spiritual soul is eternal. And it is a part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. But when we identify, just like a crazy man, when he's drunk or under the influence of controlled substances, he starts hallucinating and he calls himself the king. He calls himself the prime minister or the president. Illusion. And due to the same way, if we can apply the same example, we are under illusion because of the illusory potency of Sri Krishna, the external potency known as Maya. So we all need Especially, even if we need teachers and professors for material knowledge. We need for spiritual subject matters, which is the Vigyan, Vishesha Gyan, Iti Vigyan. Vigyan or Vigyanam is a combination of two words, Vishesh plus Gyana. Vishesh means topmost, very special knowledge. And that knowledge is not material. It's about the spirit. Who am I? Where do I come from? What is my relationship with the Supreme Lord? Somehow or the other, I am in this material world, controlled by the three modes of material nature forcefully. How can I get out of it? So these inquiries, if they are made, to a proper realized soul who is known as Guru, he can eradicate our darkness. Guru means also one who can eradicate darkness. And how is it done? Tadviddi pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya by Krishna has shown the method in the Bhagavad Gita that one should be very submissive, humble, and inquire from a realized soul, and serve the realized soul. Tad vidhi prani patena pari prashnena, ask questions. Sevaya, serve that soul, that spiritual master. Upadakshanti jnani na stattva darshana. And what kind of a person? Not any ordinary person who is simply under the modes of material nature himself is struggling. No, not to such persons. But somebody who has seen the truth. Tattva Darshinaha. Or somebody who at least speaks the truth that he has received in the disciplic succession. And you and I, we can all be those persons. As long as we don't twist or add or delete anything in the transcendental truth as it is. So Guru is meant to be asked questions. We should serve in a humble status. And Guru will eradicate our darkness by giving answers. And we see so many wonderful examples in the Vedic culture. Even in, the, in Christianity, Jesus had 12 principal disciples and they asked so many questions. And Jesus eradicated. He clarified their doubts. Similarly, in the Vedic culture, we find Krishna is the guru. Arjun is the disciple. Arjun is asking questions. Krishna is answering, clarifying all the doubts. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we find Sukhadev Goswami is the Guru, Parikshit Maharaj is the disciple, 
And Srimad Bhagavatam is full of questions that have been directed to the Guru. Uddhav is like a disciple, although he's a friend, like Arjun was a friend too. But he asked so many wonderful questions to Krishna in the last leg of Krishna's pastimes before he wound them up. Uddhav was given instructions by Sri Krishna. But here there is an amazing thing that is happening. It's the other way around. Here we find that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is Krishna one day Jagat Guru, is asking the questions. And, here, and the devotee, Rai Ramananda, is supposed to satisfy the Lord with answers based on scriptural evidence. This is indeed an amazing, amazing phenomenon. Extremely rare. And what is the reason behind it? The reason behind it is more than one. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he wanted to glorify his pure devotee, Rai Ramananda. Because he knew that Rai Ramananda is the most perfect personality that will answer all his queries or rather he would quote so many wonderful scriptural evidences for the benefit of mankind. And for the highest of the highest truths, when Mahaprabhu would relish through the lotus mouth of Rai Ramananda. Now, we all know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than Krishna in Golok Vrindavan, the son of Nanda Maharaj, the son of Mother Yashoda, who appeared approximately 535 years ago in Gaudadesh, in Bengal, in the western hemisphere of India, western part of India. And he is the most munificent avatar because he came in the mood of Radharani giving his own bhakti. But who is Rai Ramananda? Rai Ramananda is none other than one of the most intimate friends of Sri Radha, known as Vishakha Sakhi. Radharani has many, many uh, prana sakhis. Prana sakhis means as good as her, her air, life air. Uh, like we say, you know, uh, bosom mates. So without them, Radharani feels incomplete. You know, day and night, they are there with them. So who are the prana sakhis? The, the eight different innermost friends of Radharani, Lalita, Vishakha, Tungavidya, Rangadevi, Su Devi, uh, uh, etc. So like that, there are eight and Lalita and Vishakha, amongst the eight, they are the most closest to Radharani. So because the conclusion of pure devotion of Radharani, what Radharani feels for, for Krishna, who better can Krishna hear from then the most intimate associates of Sri Radha and one of them being Rai Ramananda or Lalit or Vishakha Saki. And therefore, Krishna's Kavirat Goswami says that he was empowered by Mahaprabhu. Actually, he was empowered by Radharani because Mahaprabhu is, is, a, is a combination of Radha and Krishna. So, in order to instruct Sri Krishna, Radharani, who is a part of Mahaprabhu, inspires Ramanandrai to give wonderful conclusions of the highest concept of devotional service. And it is said that by Rasika Acharya, as it is mentioned, that whenever there is the wonderful Madhuri Rasa pastimes, the conjugal love pastimes between 
Radha and Krishna and the gopis of Vrindavan, uh, Krishna accepts Vishakha as the guru. Krishna accepts Lalita as the guru. Krishna is, accepts Tungavidya Devi as a guru. Because sometimes there are discrepancies, uh, loving discrepancies between Radha and Krishna. And then uh, in order to mediate the differences, they need a mediator or somebody who can guide and bring a solution to the problem. Actually, these are not problems. For lack of words, we have to use certain words that we are used to in this in our material vocabulary. These are all transcendental pastimes which lead to higher and higher ecstasy of Krishna Prema. And in that, we will find that there are a lot of different uh, sarcastic moods, uh, opposing camps, opposing views that only uh, acts as catalysts to take in, uh, to, to enter into higher and higher levels of prema or love. So at that time, these gopis, they instruct Krishna and Krishna, like a, like a disciple, he sits down quietly and starts listening to them. Uh, sometimes it is Vishakha Sakhi, sometimes Lalita, sometimes Tunga Vidya Sakhi. So like that, so similarly we find here that it is here Krishna who wants to attain something. He wants to attain the mood of Radha. Just like if we want to attain something really bad, whether material or spiritual, we have to have that utsaha, dhairya, nishchaya. We should be determined. We should be enthusiastic. We should be very patient. So here from the Rasik angle, we can say that Nanda Nandan Krishna wanted the mood of Radha. He had not attained it yet. Because that attainment comes in the last chapter, in the last section of Chaitanya Charita Amrita, in the Antya Leela, in the 20th chapter. We are right in the Madhya, in the middle, in the 8th chapter. So here, the inspiration or the catalyst is, is Rai Ramananda to help Nanda Nandan Krishna obtain the mood of Radharani and therefore Rai Ramananda was empowered just like he was filled with a water laden cloud with all the conclusive purposes of devotional service. And then when that cloud showered, as we will go into the different verses, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became filled with the jewels of knowledge of pure devotional service. And what is the jewels of knowledge of pure devotional service? It is Radha Prem. Because she has got that, the, she is the topmost uh, jewel in Krishna Prema. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Krishna Kaviraj Goswami prays, all glories to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Acharya and all glories to all the devotees of, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very important. Uh, this is because even when he is already prayed to all the Acharyas, prayed to his own Guru, prayed to Radha Madan Mohanji, prayed to Radha Madan Gopal, in the beginning, in spite of that, in the beginning of this chapter, again, he offers his obeisances to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none other than Radha Krishna, to Lord Nityananda, who is none other than Lord Balram, the older brother of Krishna, and who is the cause of the entire creations, material and spiritual, and who is the Adi Guru, the primal uh, spiritual master. And all glory offers all glories to Advaita Acharya by remembering Advaita Acharya, who is none other than an incarnation of. Mahavishnu and Sadashiv, and he is, was the one who was instrumental in bringing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to this material world by praying 
fervently on the banks of the Ganges by offering the Ganga water, the water of the Ganges on Shaligram Shila. And also not only that, mixing with the water of the holy river was his own tears. Out of compassion, he called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, and, and Chaitanya Maha, Krishna, please come, please come. The conclusion of devotion service is becoming extinct. The pure principles of Vaishnavism are becoming extinct. Please come. Please save this world. And he fervently cried, Hu humkar gar janadi Aho ratra saraguna Ha Krishna radhika nath Prarthanatha karagara he cried and cried, Hunkar, he roared like a lion. Garjanadi, Garjan means roaring. Uh, oh, Radhika Nath, oh Krishna, please come, please come. Dhupalepa Chandanadi, and he offered the incense, he offered the lamp, he offered some sandalwood paste. Like that, he offered these wonderful aromatic items to the Shaligram Srila, persuading Krishna, please come, please come. Therefore, Advaita Acharya is glorified. He is glorified because he is one of the principal personalities of the Pancha Tattva. We always, and that is one of the things, that, that is where before chanting the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, we seek the benediction. We seek the kripa of the Pancha Tattva. We always chant the following mantra before chanting the holy names. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya. All glories to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhu Nityananda. All glories to Nityananda. All glories to Advaita. Advaita Acharya. Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita. And then there is two more principal uh, associates uh, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we chant. They call out Gadadhar. And Srivas. And Gadadhar Pandit is none other than Srimati Radharani. And Srivas Acharya is Naraji. So, when such pure associates or personalities, when we call out to them, then our chanting is purified. Although we are, we, we are full of faults, we are sinners. Just like the Christians say that believe in Jesus Christ and all your sins will be eradicated uh, just by believing in Him. Uh, so similarly, the concept is Vaishnavism, simple Vaishnavism that has been projected by the true Christians because Jesus is capable of absorbing all the different uh, sins uh, that we have uh, committed. Similarly, a guru, acharya, a Vaishnavas, the associates of the Lord are so powerful that they are able to completely absorb all of our dirty things, just like the powerful sun can absorb not only the water from the oceans and the pure waters of the rivers, but also the dirt that is there on the earth, the stool, the urine, and all those things, the sun can immediately absorb it and, and the place can become clean. So similarly, our hearts become clean when we first call out to them. And that's what Krishna Kaviraj Goswami is calling out Whereby before going into the details of this chapter, all glories to and all glories to the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gauru Bhakta Vrinda, we say Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivas Adi Gauru Bhakta Vrinda. Adi means other devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that is the system we have. If we want real mercy, then it comes in the in the we have to give our respect in the ascending order to the Vaishnavas who are guiding us, to our spiritual masters, to the spiritual masters of the spiritual masters, to the spiritual masters who come in the disciplic succession, all the way ascending order. And then in descending order, the mercy descends from the Supreme Lord through them. They become the via medium. So therefore, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami says, Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dveta Chandra, Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Now, 
Krishna Kaviraj Goswami enters into the actual pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Purvarite Prabhu Age Gamana Korila Jiyada Narshimba Shetre Kota Dina Gele Gela Purvarite, according to his previous planned program, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had planned that he's going to visit all these different places of pilgrimage. Uh, uh, he visited the area known as Jiyad Narshimha, Shetra, or the place of pilgrimage known as Jiyad Narshimha. Uh, this Jiyad Narshimha is situated on a top of a hill about five miles or so from a place known as Vishakhapatnam. Vishakhapatnam is one of the famous places in India, especially nowadays it is known well known for its oil refineries. But five miles on the top, on the top of the hill from Vishakhapatnam is the very, very old ancient temple of Jiyad Narsingha. And uh, this uh, temple is affluent and is a typical example of the ancient architecture of India. Uh, and it is constructed, it is mentioned that it is constructed out of one stone tablet. So we do not find that it is a conglomeration of stones or many stones put together from one huge tablet. This entire temple was, was constructed. And uh, it is said that, uh, that there are in the residential quarters of this temple, there are priests and devotees. And at the present moment, there are many residential quarters to accommodate visiting devotees. So if somebody goes to South India, we can follow in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just like Bhakti Nath Thakur says in his uh, poem, poem or, or bhajan, Shuddha Bhakata Charana Renu uh, Bhajane Anukula. He says, Gaur Amara Jai Sabasthane Korilo Brahmana Range Wherever my Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went, I will indeed visit those places uh, uh, in the guidance of those pure devotees who have understood or in the guidance of devotees who have understood the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna. So, and the original deity of Narsingadev is situated in, in the depths of the temple and but there's another duty deity known as the Vijay Murti. So sometimes for the for uh, major festivals, the, the 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 main deity of the temple doesn't leave the temple uh, sanctum, but the Vijay duty Utsav uh, Vigraha, uh, they are brought out sometimes on the streets etc. for the festivities so that everybody can take darshan. Uh, so, like this, uh, the priests that belong to the Sri Sampradaya, Ramanuja Sampradaya, uh, are in charge of this particular uh, temple uh, of, of, of Jiyad Narsingha. So, uh, further it is said, Narsingha dekhya koila dandavata pranati premavashe koila bahu so as soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees the deities of Narasimha Dev, when he takes darshan, uh, he offered his prostrated obeisances. Uh, dandavata pranati. Dandavat, danda means a rod. Danda in, in, in Sanskrit. Danda or most of the Indian Vedic the languages that have emanated from Sanskrit. Danda means a rod. Danda also means to punish. And generally one is punished by, by the beating of a rod. So that is why it, uh, there's a double meaning of the word Danda. And Vata means just like. So when a rod falls on the ground, how does it fall straight down? All the parts of the stick are touching the ground. Uh, just like that, when we are in front of the, any deities or in front of a guru or a exalted Vaishnava, we should offer dandavats. Therefore, we say the, the translation in English is obeisances, but dandavats means uh, the, the, there is no such perfect word 
in English. The obeisances can come as close as possible. That was means just like when, when a rod falls without support on the ground, just like that, we should fall on the ground in submitting ourselves in humility, where all the paths from our palms to our forehead to our chest to our, our, our tummy, our thighs, our calves, our toes, everything is flat on the ground in prost prostrating. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he saw the deities of Lord Narsingadev, he offered his dandvat, dandvats, that's what it's called, prostrated obeisances to the deities of Narsingadev. When we go to the temple, sometimes we see that, especially we've seen that people who come from the Indian background, uh, they have really lost the culture. Uh, they do not offer the dandvats. The males should offer dandvats always in front of the deities. And the women should offer obeisances while uh, not actually offering like a stick, but they should offer it with their forehead on the ground and they should be touching their knees and their elbows. So it's like a half prostration. That is the proper etiquette. But the males should offer full obeisances uh, in front of the deities. Because if we do not, then, then there is some arrogance in us. It's as if going to a museum and looking at the painting or the sculptor of Michelangelo and appreciating it. No, it should not be done. The proper, because the deity is none other than Krishna. Krishna's name, Krishna's deities, Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's uh, uh, places of worship or Krishna's uh, places of pilgrimage. They're non different from Krishna. They are Sri Krishna. So the deity is not made of marble or stone or some kind of material element. It could be, but the deity is actually, the, the, the Supreme Lord is requested to reside in it. Uh, the spirit is called upon by the pure devotee. And then the spirit of the Supreme Lord resides in that. So that is why it is not called a statue. Uh, people with poor fund of knowledge, they call it, they use the word statue. But it is not statue. Statue is of Mahatma Gandhi, or statue is of Lenin, or statue is of Ma of of a, of some of a great politician or a leader. But it is this is not even a lot of the Hindus in India. They use the word statue, so that is a very very poor fund of knowledge. Uh, it is an offense. Statue is of mortals, uh, but the deity is of of transcendental personalities including the deity of the, the Acharya or the Guru, who is none other than, uh, who is empowered by Sri Krishna. So, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord himself. He is offering obeisances to his own incarnation as the half-man, half-lion incarnation. Uh, Narsinga. Uh, Singa means lion and Nara means man. So, the Supreme Lord appeared to protect his devotee, the five-year-old boy Prahlad, to, because he was being harassed and, 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 and tortured by his own father who was demoniac in nature. But the son, the five-year-old son was a devotee. This happened in some Satya Yuga, which is millions and billions and billions of years ago. And it's a perpetual cycle. When Satya Yuga comes again, the incarnation of Lord Narsingadev appears. He appears from a pillar and he appears to protect because when Hiranyakashipu, the demon father, uh, because the son had so much faith, he says, I will kill you. I will kill you. You are actually uh, calling out to my enemy. The Lord is my enemy. I am the all-powerful. Don't you see? Everybody is shaking and shivering. All the demigods, right from the uh, earthly planet to the hellish planets to the heavenly planets, they're all subservient to me. I am the powerful. So demoniac persons are like that. They are inimical to the Lord. So he continued chanting the holy names of the Lord. Not only that, he was, uh, he was sent to the demoniac school. And, and the, the teachers were warned by the demoniac father, Hiranyakashipu, make sure he becomes a good demon. Give him all the different demoniac instructions, how to become a good demon, etc. But when he was in school, 
along with the other uh, along with the other demon kids from from different demoniac parents he would preach about the holy lord the 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 the, the, uh, the, the supreme lord he was a pure devotee right from birth so uh, getting fed up he uh, uh, hiranyakashipu he engaged his soldiers in to kill his five year old son prallad you know uh, push him from the top of the highest hill and they did that and when he was pushed he he started chanting the holy names shri hari shri hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and he was saved he was dumped in a empty very dark well full of very poisonous snakes that were infested with poisonous snakes and again he started chanting the holy names like that there were many methods employed to torture and kill him they tried to to crush him under the foot of a crazy elephant and when the elephant he chanted the holy names the the heavy foot of the elephant fell like a soft pillow on the belly of prallad so like this when eventually all fail the powerful demon who thought he was all powerful his father says i will now kill you with my own bare hands let me see where is your lord where is your hari uh, the word hari means one who takes away our miseries one who takes our one who absorbs our sins is known as hari where is your hari that you are always singing the glories of is he here is he in this palace is he going to save you from my wrath and he says yes he is present every them everywhere my dear father everywhere is he present in this huge pillar and he says yes my dear father he is present he is omnipresent he is present everywhere let me take care of your hurry right now and he immediately strikes with his powerful fist it is said that hiranyakashipu the father of prallad had the strength of 10000 elephants and he struck that pillar hard and the pillar cracked and out came out there was a thundering sound and the firmament went dark and all the demigods started shivering and uh, and the lions and the jackals they started and the ele- the elephants started passing urine and stool out of out of the the tumultuous sound that happened from that pillar and out came out an amazing personality known as narshinga half man half lion and the rest is history tavakara kamala vare nakham adbhuta shringam dalita hiranyakashipu tanu bringam keshava drita narhari rupa jay jagadish hare i offer my obeisances unto that the 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 master and the lord of the universes jagadish hare one who takes away my fears one who takes away my sinful activities one who absorbs everything that is bad in me one who even steals my heart that is hari that is hare and he appeared in that amazing form nobody had seen that not even the other demigods never ever such a form of the lord had ever manifest and this is what they saw half man half lion how did that happen because several several eons ago Hiranyakashipu the demoniac personality sat in meditation for thousands and thousands and thousands of millenniums and he wanted to become immortal and at that time he was so emancipated that even to the bone but he had still held on to the pran vayu to the life air so some of the yogis can do that although they can shed the skin they can shed all the tissue they can shed everything but still the consciousness the soul can still keep together the five life airs the topmost yogis can do that the ants had eaten up hiranyakashipu's body and an ant hill was formed over him and finally lord brahma the first created being came in front and says stop your austerities this is just too much what do you want what do you want and he says i want to become immortal grant me that o oh lord brahma he says that's not possible hiranyakashipu 
even I have to die, although I live trillions of years in the highest heavenly planet, but even there, because it is a part of the material world, it is destroyed eventually. But that old age and disease, everybody is subject to that. Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita, Janma Mrityu Janavyadi Dukkha Dosha Nudarshanam. That is the quality of the material world. Eternality is only found in the kingdom of God, Vaikuntha, and the planets of Vaikuntha. But in the material world, everything must come to cease one day. Jatasya hi mrityu, mrutasya. Krishna says that everything that is born must die in this material world. So, I cannot grant you that. But Hiranyakashipu was very tricky. He said, okay, grant me that I will be never be killed by any man. And reluctantly, Lord Brahma said, so be it, tathastu. Grant me, Lord Brahma, that I should not be killed by any demon, nor should I be killed by any demigod, nor should I be killed by any weapons, nor should I be killed in my palace, outside my palace, nor in water, nor in sky, nor on earth, nor by any living being, nor by any dead being. And he covered, nor in the day, nor in the night, he covered all his bases. And Lord Brahma said, so be it. He granted him those wishes and then from then forth on, he became almost invincible. He created havoc in the entire universal systems and the hellish planets, on the earthly planets, on the, in the heavenly planets. Everybody shivered when he simply raised his eyebrow and he simply, when he simply mocked and laughed. But somehow the other, the Supreme Lord, had to fulfill the desire of Lord Brahma who was his devotee when he gave all these benedictions. I should not be killed by man or animal. So he appeared in the form of half man, half lion, Narasimha. Narasimha dekhiya koilo dandvat pranati. He fought with him. He appeared at about noon time. And he fought with, with uh, the demon Hiranyakashipu almost until twilight, taking him to the to the threshold of his own palace. And when twilight happened, he immediately picked him up, put him on his lap, and tore him apart with his nails. Neither in the palace, neither outside the palace. Neither by any weapon, but simply by his nails. Because the nails are considered neither dead or alive, just like hair. Huh. Amazing. So Keshava Drita Narhari Rupa Jai Jagadishare Tavakara Kamala Vare Nakam, your beautiful lotus like hands and the chisel like nails tore apart the chest of nursing, the, the stomach of nursing Dev, his intestines. Right at the right moment, at twilight, neither day or night, neither with any weapon, neither with taking the taking in his own incarnation as any of his other incarnations or any demigod or as a human being or as a particular animal. He fulfilled his desire and therefore whenever we need protection, the Vaishnavas always think of Lord Narsingadeva for protection. And not only that, the advanced Vaishnavas of Raj or Vrindavan, they also worship Narsingadeva because they want, they don't know that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He is just the delicate darling who is simply a naughty person was simply going out cow herding and he's met with many, many demons sometimes. So Mother Yashoda prays to Lord Narsingadev, please protect my dear son, Krishna. So they're like that. There are many, many ancient temples of Lord, Lord Narsingadev in India. There is one in Govardhan, which is over 5,000 years old, near Apsara Kund and Naval Kund, just before Puchrika Lota, on the inner Parikrama Mark. My dear good friend, Dr. Nantran Prabhu has taken darshan. So these are some of the places that we should visit. Gauramara Jai Sabasthane Koralo Brahmana Range Shai Sthan Heribo Ami 
pranay bhakat sangye with those persons or with those devotees not with some guide who is going to you give them 500 rupees and he's going to simply you know for your money he's going to show you all the different places no we don't need guides we don't need to be tourists that devotion spirit has to be there when we visit the places of pilgrimage and under the guidance of those devotees who have underst- understood the conclusions of pure devotees pranay bhakta sange prem avesh koila bahu nritya and chaitanya mahaprabhu with a lot of love started dancing chaitanya mahaprabhu was known as gora natwar natwar means dancer and var means a master the master dancer he was such a beautiful uh, narottam das thakur says addresses him in that which uh, bhajan ji anila prema dhana in the separation of the vaishnavas in separation of mahaprabhu uh, narottam das thakur wrote kaha mor swarup rupa kaha sanata kaha das ragunatha patit pav uh, then he says um <laughs> je sab sangira sang sangila kaile se kailo vilas kotha gela mora gora natara a few words are i'm missing here and there but the essence is that where is my gora nataraj where is the my goranga mahaprabhu is the master dancer uh, gora nataraj even lord shiva is known as nataraj because he is a ecstatic master dancer we see the famous a uh, deity of nataraj where lord shiva is standing on one leg on on the mount kailash and he is like an expert dancing so even mother kunti calls krishna uh, natwar bapu in kunti stava because he is a very good dancer krishna krishna used to uh, impress the gopis by dancing every time the gopis would say i would give you some butter i will give you some butter mill krishna dance for us was krishna was a natwar bapu he was an excellent dancer krishna displayed his dance qualities during the season of winter when he danced on the serpent kaliya uh on 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 his uh, on the hoods of the kaliya why did he do that he could have easily killed the kaliya under water when he jumped into the jamuna to when he was playing ball with his with his coward friends the ball went into the jamuna and now there was no ball to play so all the coward boys were thinking oh what shall we do now we are far from home we don't have another ball krishna immediately you know went on to the long branch of the kadam tree and he jumped into the the deep waters of jamuna and there he f- found the ball and not only that he saw the the demoniac serpent kaliya who was creating havoc in 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 gokul and the waters were poisoned because of his poison even when the 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 the, the birds were flying overhead over the jamuna river river uh, they would die because of the poisonous fumes that emanated cows could not drink the water the the rajwasis the ladies could not draw water from the river jamuna because of the poison because he had rained there he he was creating havoc so krishna had a purpose that ball was one of the purposes and always when there is a pastime there are multifarious reasons why krishna acts in a certain way so he dives deep into the water brings the ball and then he confronts the the kaliya serpent and then after confronting him subduing him most of the 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 demons krishna kills but he did not kill him because the the serpent is a representation of our of our uncontrolled senses so krishna controls them by dancing on the hoods of the serpent and he brings the, he not only does that he brings the the entire head of the serpent surfaces and krishna is dancing in the middle of the jamuna why is he doing that because everybody from vrindavan is gathered there the all the boyfriends all the boy boys and all the young girls have gathered there the elders have gathered to see that amazing sight that krishna is dancing he is playing flute on one hand and he's 
meticulously dancing on many many hoods the kaliya serpent had not one hood but he had as i said the sahasra he had thousands of hoods and krishna used to dance just like somebody who is an expert in playing the harmonium or the keyboard how the fingers can dance from one key to another key his his feet were dancing from one hood to another hood and he was looking so amazing so the reason is that he had another reason he wanted to impress the young maidens that look i am your lover see i can do this as just like you know when a young college boy or a girl or in the or in school how the boys they try to impress the girls <clears throat> by by uh, doing certain feats of course this is transcendental because they wanted that and like that from that point onward it is said that from that very young age uh, that madhuri ras was manifest uh, just like you know uh, the the uh, the uh, how should i say uh, the, the 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 loving affection between a boy and a girl it starts at the time of puberty you know those those uh, prior to that they don't see much of a difference even when they're playing or they meet up so like this these are the different uh, uh, pastimes of sri krishna and he introduces that at that time that that attraction that a male and a female feel feel for each other uh, by that particular feat that he has performed in the kaliya daman leela or the subduing of the kaliya serpent pastime <clears throat> so here chaitanya mahaprabhu a uh, prema veshe prema veshe means an ecstatic love chaitanya mahaprabhu was such an ecstatic dancer that when he danced you know he was an amazing dancer he danced when he came when he went to puri for the first time and when he saw the darshan of lord jagannath he went into ecstasy and he started dancing and he started singing the mahamantra hundreds and hundreds of people that were there in the temple they all gathered around in a circle and finally out of ecstatic love when he saw lord jagannath he swooned and then that's when sarva hodacharya seeing that oh he's a sanyasi he's from my sampradaya the bharti sampradaya what is he doing dancing like a crazy man and simply chanting the holy names instead of uh, instead of you know chanting the hymns of the vedas and, and advanced hymns from the scriptures bring him to my home and in that fainted condition in the prema avesha they took him to sarva hodacharya's house and then when he came back when they revived him then that's a different pastime which we find in the chaitanya charita the conversation between sarva hodacharya and chaitanya mahaprabhu so prema avashe prior to even seeing lord jagannath because when mahaprabhu went to jagannath puri uh, the uh, the lord jagannath deities were in anasar lord jagannath always has this pastime of falling sick for about 2 weeks prior to the rath yatra in the anasar period so when mahaprabhu went there he could not take darshan so then he was so morose he was so sad then lord jagannath came in his dreams don't worry go and see me in alarnath and i will see you there personally so there when when chaitanya mahaprabhu i think alarnath temple is about 30 kilometers from jagannath puri very wonderful place unspoiled very ancient temple so there the deity of the four arm form of the lord is there and when chaitanya mahaprabhu saw just like that prema avesh he started dancing again and when he danced in ecstasy he fell on the ground and right there and there the stone melted even today when we go we find the entire uh, what do you call the uh, akar or the form of mahaprabhu that was melted in the stone his arms his cheek his entire lotus body we find in the alarnar temple that the chaitanya mahaprema avesh he started dancing in the rath yatra chaitanya mahaprabhu danced danced like crazy he spun in the air like like a fire brand and even like that even when he first went down to dakshin bharat he went down there uh, uh, right during his travels that we are speaking of in south india when he went to the adi keshav temple when he saw the deities of the lord again prema avesh in ecstatic love he started dancing and when he started dancing all the priests and the brahmins of the sri sampradaya gathered around and it was venkat bhat one of the bleeding brahmins who kept everybody behind and says let him dance let him dance let what a what ecstasy tears of ecstasy flowed in venkat bhat tears of ecstasy flowed 
when all the other Brahmins saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dance. And then finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after his ecstatic dancing, Venkat Bhatt brought him home. He asked him to stay. He served him. And then his son, the great, was he is, at that time a very small boy, Gopal Bhatta. He said, Mahaprabhu, please stay more with us. Please stay. And he cried and cried and cried. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, okay, I will stay. And then he blessed him later on. And he became one of the most leading, one of the six Goswamis to him. Radha Ramanji manifest in Vrindavan. So, uh, this is the thing. That is why uh, the, uh, Mahaprabhu Kirtana Nitya Gita Vaditra Madhyan Manaso Rasena Romancha Kampashru Taranga Bhajo Vande Guru Sri Charnaravinda. We sing that in the Mangalarti. What kind of ecstasy our pure Acharyas or the pure spiritual masters feel when they are standing in front of the deities. They are singing the glories of Mahaprabhu, the Kirtan that Mahaprabhu sang in line with pure devotional conclusions, Mahaprabhu Kirtana, Nitya Gita, they always dance and sing. That is the Vaishnava system. Uh, so we find that in our temples, in our Gaudiya Vaishnava temples, in our Iskon temples, in every Kirtan, there is dancing and singing. It is a feast. Katha Ganam Natyam Gamanapicha. That is a quality that comes from the spiritual abode of Golok Vrindavan. So, Preme Aveshe Koilo Bahu, Bahu Nitya. He danced a lot. Uh, Gita Stuti, and he offered many, many different prayers to, uh, the, to, to the deity of Narsingadev, the Jihad Narsingadev. And then Mahaprabhu sang this himself. Sri Narsinga, Jai Narsinga, Jaya Nara Singha, Praladesha Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringa. This is a wonderful prayer. When we are standing in front of Lord Narsingadev, we can always repeat the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's saying, Sri Narsinga, oh Lord Narsinga, all glories to Lord Narsinga, Jai Narsinga, Jai Narsinga, all glories to uh, Praladesha, uh, the, the master of Pralad. Uh, Pralad is the servant. Pralad Esha, Esha means master, Isha or Ishwar. Praladesha, Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringa. Padma means Lakshmi Devi. Uh, so he's always engaging in beholding the lotus like face. Of the goddess of fortune, just like bumblebees. What a beautiful description. So here, basically, the bhav is of Raj. You know, if we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although although describing Narsinga Dev, and and Lakshmi Dev is always tasting the sweetness of Lakshmi. Here, it also means, in in a deeper sense, that it is Krishna who is always tasting the beauty of the gopis of Vrindavan, or Lord Jagannath, Mudabiri Nari, Kamalaswad, Madhupa. Rama, Shambhu, Brahma, Ganesha, Chita, Pado, Jagannath, Swami, Nayana, Patagami, Nayana, Patagami, Bhavatume. Uh, this is in the Jagannath Ashtakam, uh, the first verse. So, what does Lord Jagannath do? Mudaviri Nari. Mudaviri Nari means the damsels of Raj. A Kamala Swada, Madhupa. He is like that bumblebee who is tasting the nectar or the honey from the sweet maidens of Vrindavan. This is the beauty. Of, 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 of this verse in inner inner beauty that projected the glories of Narsingadev, projected the glories of Prahlad Maharaj, but internally Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is still thinking of Vrindavan. Uh, this is something very, very secretive, but we can catch it if we have some mercy that has been bestowed by us by our Gaudi Acharyas. So Prahlad is a Jaya Padma. Padma means uh, Lakshmi Devi. A mukha Padma Bringa. A mukha, the lotus, lotus face of Padma, of, of, of uh, Lakshmi Devi. A Padma Bringa. Uh, the, the, the Bringa means the, the bumblebee who is attracted by the lotus-like face of, of Lakshmi Devi. So, so there are different types of Narsinga Dev. There is Lakshmi Narsinga. There is Prahlad Narsinga. Generally, when we sing the glories in the temple after the Narsinga Arti, a lot of the devotees say Jai Lakshmi Narsinga. It is okay to say that, but one should not miss saying Jai Prahlad Narsinga. Because this particular song by Jaidya Goswami and this prayer is for the protection of Prahlad and the manifestation of how Lord Narsinga Dev appeared. Uh, so that appearance is not the pastime with Lakshmi Devi. 
a lot of the devotees at the end after after finishing the nursing prayers lakshmi narsingha dev ki jai so okay not wrong, nothing wrong but prior to that one should say prahlad narsingha ki jai because we are praying to the prahlad narsingha we are not praying to the lakshmi narsingha because at that time the mood is to protect prahlad so you know we have to be very that is why prabhupad has wonderfully said krishna consciousness we have to be very conscious so everything is about about bhav you know wherever we are so here this particular verse that chaitanya mahaprabhu sang was actually uh, there's another verse that was composed by sridhar swami and shri prabhupad quotes in the purport vagishya yasya vadane lakshmi yasya charvakshashi yasya te hridaye samved tam narsingam aham bhaje so sridhar swami now here he is glorifying lakshmi narsingha vagishya yasya vadane vag means saraswati vaga isha vag means our speech and isha means one who is the controller so whatever we speak if we are singing if, if we know verses if we know knowledge then the goddess of knowledge is saraswati she is one of the expansion of radharani so vagishya yasya vadane uh, lord narsingha is always assisted by saraswati devi the the the, the lakshmi yasya chavakshashi and lakshmi devi is always resting on the chest of of uh, narsingha dev yasyate hriday samvittam narsingha mahamaji uh, the lord is always complete in knowledge with himself he is samvit he is the sam, samvit shakti samvit means samyak vitta iti samvit uh, samyak means everything vitta means to know he knows everything directly and indirectly in the shrimad bhagavatam the very first verse vyasdev in the mangla charan says om janmadi yasya yato anvayat itaratascha artheshwa abhigya so itaratascha directly and indirectly krishna knows everything and is abhigya abhigya means he knows he is completely cognizant he is full of knowledge that is why we also say satchit ananda chitta means he is full cogniz- cognizance so one of the names of krishna is satchit ananda and we are all satchit anand das yeah we are also made in his man is made in the image of god uh, we are part and parcels of him mama yam sa jeeva loka jeeva bhuta sanatan krishna says in the bhagavad gita that all the living entities are is uh, are is separated parts and part and parcels there there is atomic so we also have the same qualities of sat chit ananda sat we are eternal the soul never dies chit uh, right now we are covered because of maya we our real knowledge is covered but when we are situated in our constitutional position then we understand we are fully cognizant that i am a spirit soul and i am a servant of sri krishna jivar swarup hoy krishna nityaras that is the chitta part of the jiva and ananda the result is that we are always once we are situated on the brahma bhuta prasanna atma platform we are always prasanna atma we are full of bliss ananda because we are part and parcels of sri krishna we have those qualities because we are and i have given this example supposing if this the shawl is made of wool and consider this entire shawl to be a representation of krishna and these little threads that we see here if i take a little thread uh which is a part and parcel of the shawl so what is the quality of this thread it is not cotton because this shawl is made of wool the quality is 100% wool if this if this is made of some other synthetic material then the quality will be the same just like shri prabhupad gives an example that the ocean has the same the, the the drop of ocean has the same chemical composition as the entire ocean if we take one drop it has the same chemical composition but the ocean is vast it is infinite decimal it is great it is vibhu but the drop is anu anu means very infinite very small uh, and and the ocean is fine uh, infinite it is very huge so similarly krishna is infinite but we are being is part and parcels uh we are infinite tasimo we are very very atomic in nature but we do possess all the qualities of godliness of the qualities of krishna so sri dar swami has composed this so when we are in front of lord narsingha we can say these prayers the prayers that chaitanya mahaprabhu said the prayers of sri dar swami vagishya yasya vadane lakshmi yasya sarvakshashi yasya tri sarvadeya samvit tam narsingha bhava bhaje and then there is the narsingha kavacha that is there especially meant for the protection and lord narsingha has protected many many devotees just not prallad so uh similarly there is a commentary in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam where shrimad swami 
uh, describes Lord Narsingadev in this way. Where Sridhar Swami is one of the most uh, amazing commentators of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, many, many centuries before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very fond of hearing the commentaries of Srimad Bhagavatam that were compiled by Sridhar Swami. So, Pradlada Ruda Ladam Bhakta Vidya Vidarnam Sharadindu Ruchim Vande Parindravadanam Hari. So, the meaning of this is Pralada Rudaya Ladam, one who gives joy to the heart of Pralada. Uh, Pralada Rudaya, Rudaya means heart, Alladam. Alladam means to joy. Uh, Bhakta Vidya Vidarnam. And is always, you know, within his heart and always kills the knee signs or the ignorance that attracts the devotees. So that is the reason. Sarva Bhakti Vigna Nashak Narsingade Bhagwan Ki Jai. We get so many Vigna. Vigna means obstacles uh, in our spiritual life. So we pray to Lord Narsingha to remove them, not only for our physical protection, but also for our spiritual protection. Because Bhakti Avidya, Bhakti means pure devotional service, and Avidya means uh, the, the, the knee science, things that will keep away, keep us away from pure devotion. Vidarnam, uh, that, he, that he will protect us from that knee science or from that ignorance. Sharada Indu Ruchi Vande. And his mercy is just simply like the moon on the autumn night on Sharad Purnima. Sharanda Indum Ruchim Vande. Para Indra Vadanam Harim. <coughs> and he is his face is like that of a lion pa, para indra indra also uh, one of the words in sanskrit is lion lion is no indra is actually meaning king so the the king of the forest is a lion right so uh, para indra para para indra means uh, he has got para, para indram vadanam hari the one who has got the face of a lion i offer my obeisances unto him so beautiful. See, this is what real poetry is when we actually hear from pure realized souls. Every word, Pralada, Rudaya, Alladam, one who gives joy to the heart of Pralad, Bhakta, Vidya, Vidaranam, one who takes away the ignorance in the heart of the, of the devotee. Sharad Hindu, Ruchim Vande. And he is so beautiful as, as, if, as if the autumn moon has arisen. I offer my obeisances into Para Indra, the lion king, uh, Vadanam Harim, who has taken the, the, the form or the body of a lion. So, very beautiful. So, I think I, uh, I will uh, stop here now. This is a beautiful chapter. This may take several sessions, uh, but it's worth every word that we can absorb. Because if we do so much, maybe we can retain so much. But hopefully, you know, we beg the mercy that we can uh, grab the essence. You know, these verses, whether we know them by heart or not, are not so important. And even if we know them by heart, but if we do not know the conclusions or we do not feel them in our heart, then it is as useless. So that is why we should not be on the platform of Gyan. Uh, gyan karma Adi Anavritam. Beyond. Anukulina Krishna Anushilanam. Tad Bhakti Ruttam. So this is what our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is just the stage that is being set here before he actually reaches the place where he meets uh, Rai Ramanan, but he is very close by. Uh, that is uh, um, uh, that, that is close to the, to the, the, the meeting place or the rendezvous between Rai Ramanan and, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, in a town called Jiyad Narshinga. And that way, uh, some of the other, by the mercy of Krishna Kaviraj Goswami, we were able to glorify a little bit about Lord Narshinga Dev. Because here, we, we glorify not only the devotees, Jaya Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dvaita Chandra, Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, we, call, we glorified Mahaprabhu, we glorified Nityanandra, we glorified Dveda Chaya, we glorify all the devotees of Mahaprabhu and we glorify Narsingha Dev Bhagwan. Um, so it's so amazing that perhaps there was a sequence here that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already and, and, and it's mentioned now that I, I, I recollect the few verses before that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had planned this uh, as planned 
So he had to sequence where he was going to go. And then just before meeting Rai Ramanan and uh, himself, he visited the Jihad Narsingha so that Narsingha De Bhagwan can take away, he can take away all the avidya that is there within our hearts so that when Mahaprabhu meets uh, Rai Ramanan Rai Ramananda, we will be able to absorb, hopefully with a pure heart, their conversation. So amazing. I mean, I'm just feeling that ecstasy right now just because I just, for the first time, you know, I kind of linked this up and I hope this makes sense to the Vaishnavas. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu planned? Because Krishna Kavira says that he planned this ahead of time. So this plan ahead of time is first taking the mercy of Narsingha Dev Bhagwan is important because Mahaprabhu obviously knew that at some point, you know, his biography will be spread all over the world. And... Uh, and, 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 and especially on such very important uh, points of pure bhakti, the, 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 the heart needs to be cleansed. So we pray to Lord Narsingadev that please cleanse our hearts so that we are ready to enter into these deeper pastimes and the conclusions of pure devotion. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, um, Ah. <sighs>